This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue looking at the plutonium files, America's secret medical experiments in the Cold War, we're broadcasting from Boulder, Colorado. Our guest, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Eileen Wilson, now lives in Denver. Um, the lessons, let the lessons of history remind us all that the best safeguard for the future is an informed, informed and active citizenry. Um, let's continue on this journey of the people who were injected and the people who injected them. You know, this certainly sounds a little like the Tuskegee experiments. But tell us, who ran this program? Um, the program started. Uh, it, in the Manhattan Project that was the project to build the atomic bomb in the early 40s. Um, side by side with the physicists worked a group of doctors who were interested in finding out how to protect their own workers in the weapons complex and also trying to figure out what these new radioisotopes did in the human body. So. Uh, Basically, the beginning uh, was the uh, the Fathers of the Bomb project, the medical doctors and scientists that were the tier below the Nobel laureates, below the Oppenheimers, below the Fermis, and so on. And did those guys, though, the Fermis and the Oppenheimers, know this was happening? Uh, certainly, the records indicate that Oppenheimer approved uh, the injections of these patients with plutonium because uh, Los Alamos at that time was fighting a severe contamination problem and the scientists who were working in that in those laboratories were concerned about their own health. It's interesting, didn't Oppenheimer come from Berkeley and you had Elmer Allen who was injected in California? That's correct. Uh, there was a large component, component excuse me, of the atomic bomb project in the Bay Area. Conducted where? At the University of California at Berkeley and also at University of California San Francisco. So we're talking about a nexus of university, military, working together. Um, ex that's exactly right. Um, in, during the Manhattan Project it was a very strange hybrid animal where you had uh, people that were in the military uh, working for the military and you had people that were getting paid by universities. The robbing of graves? Um, that occurred, well, um, that, I, I don't know if I would quite put it so strongly as that, but um, they did uh, exhume bodies. Um, these, With the family's consent of dead people? Um, they, they sought the consent of the families, but they did not tell the families the true purpose for the exhumations. What did they tell them? Um, that they had been given some radioisotope or some chemical and they wanted to see what it had done in the, in the bodies of their loved ones. Well, that's true, isn't it? Yes, but they did not use the word plutonium. Ah, uh-huh. Um, so, can you name a scientist and can you tell us um, what the response has been? Um, when I did my research, most of the scientists, with the exception of Heimer Friedel, who was the assistant medical director of the Manhattan Project, uh, was dead. Um, the Manhattan the, Project being the name of the, the, the atomic program bomb. that had developed the atomic bomb. But the scientists who had conducted the more recent studies defended them, that they were important to um, uh, uh, protecting the workers in the nuclear weapons complex or that they were harmless. Okay. So let's go through the experiments. Um, the 18 people injected with plutonium, none of them knew that that had happened to them. But um, moving on, in a Massachusetts school, the Fernald School, 73 disabled children spoon-fed oatmeal that had radio, radioisotopes in them, radioactive isotopes. What happened? Uh, in that case, uh, this was a nutrition study and they were given uh, radioactive calcium and other uh, radioisotopes. Every morning? In their, in their oatmeal. It was either mixed into the oatmeal or in the milk. And these boys did not know uh, what was being given to them, nor did their parents. And in fact, they were told that uh, 
this was really something nutritious and good for them. Um, they were asked to give uh, blood samples, urine samples, feces samples. Um, How and long did this go on for? It went on for a number of years, and these 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 boys grew into men and did not find out what had been done to them till the 90s. Upstate New York Hospital, 18-year-old girl thinks she is being treated for a pituitary disorder. Gets injected with plutonium. Um, this is a this was a young woman who, again, like Elmer Allen, uh, wound up in the hospital in a hospital at the wrong place and at the wrong time, and was injected. Tennessee Clinic, 829 pregnant women served radioactive iron as part of their regular treatment. What did they think they were getting? This was a this was a study done immediately after World War II and these young women came to the clinic thinking that they were getting vitamins to drink, that this would help their babies. And in fact what was being studied was how fast the radio iodine crossed into the placenta. And where was this? This was at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. And who was in charge? Uh, there were a group of scientists from Vanderbilt University. And what happened to these women? Um, there were, they had all kinds of ailments, skin diseases, cancer, blood disorders, um, some of their offspring, their children that, were, that, that they were carrying at the time of this experiment died of cancer and very strange cancers at very young ages. Were there any whistleblowers among the doctors or nurses and the nurses now? There was no whistleblowers whatsoever. Uh, the doctors uh, closed ranks and considered this uh, worthwhile science and something they were doing uh, to protect the country. What about patients who were brought in the basement of a hospital and experimented on in the middle of the night? Where was this? This was an experiment that was done in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was another one of these hybrid exper experiments that was half medical, half military. And in many cases, these, that, that's the problem with hy hybrid experiments, is that um, oftentimes what's medically good for the patient is not militarily the best experiment. So uh, these studies were done with cancer patients. Uh, they were told it would help their cancer. Uh, what the doctors were looking at uh, was trying to figure out in the event of an atomic bomb detonation, how long could soldiers fight? We're talking to Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Eileen Wilson. Her uh, series came out in the Albuquerque Tribune and she turned it into a book, The Plutonium Files. Um, your expose uh, came out under the Clinton years. President Clinton set up an advisory committee on human radiation experiments, which did its own digging into hundreds of federally sponsored human radiation programs. Um, remarkably enough, the report, the final report, came out on October 3rd, 95, the same day as the verdict in the O.J. Simpson case. I don't remember seeing uh, the the report results reported any attention being paid to them. It, it was um, it was really unfortunate because um, everybody in the country was focused on O.J. Simpson and no or was it timed exactly right? Because let's remember every day people were waiting for the O.J. Simpson verdict, so it clearly was not beyond um, the government commission uh, to understand the attention of the nation was focused elsewhere. Um, I hadn't thought about that, Amy. I mean, it's certainly a possibility. Um, you know, so the results came out anyway. The results came out anyway, and, um, and nobody paid attention to it. And what were the results? Basically, they, um, they confirmed that um, thousands and thousands of experiments had been done on U.S. citizens, that uh, the victims were the most vulnerable people in our society, the young, the disenfranchised, the poor, people of color, people who did not know enough to ask questions. In other words, the subjects were not doctor's children or friends of their doctors. They were people who were vulnerable. 
in how many places in the United States? Fernald School in Massachusetts, the Cincinnati tests, uh, Elmer Allen was at University of California, Berkeley. Um, how many sites were these government scientists working in? They, they, there were hundreds of sites. They were private hospitals, public hospitals, um, military installations, uh, orphanages, about any place that a doctor was working where they might be able to get a grant and do a paper. They were using these substances. Prison. Uh, yes, that was a really, really ugly experiment. Uh, uh, a group of prisoners had their testicles irradiated. Where? Uh, in Oregon, mostly. Uh, and the purpose of it was for NASA. They were interested in knowing the effects of um, space radiation on astronauts. And what happened to these prisoners? Uh, the, many of the prisoners that I interviewed were still in prison. Uh, they had all kinds of of medical problems and cancers and health issues. Lawsuits? Many, many, many lawsuits filed. Uh, some of the families were compensated. Uh, the plutonium patients got an average per family of $400,000. I think that was the largest. And their patients at other sites around the country got lesser amounts. Mm -hmm. um, what about today? Do you think we have learned anything? And as people listen to this, I'm sure there are many who will start to wonder. I think, I think that the, the way to safeguard yourself, you as a patient or your loved ones as patients, is by asking questions. And the other way to safeguard, the other way to prevent these things from happening again is to make sure that what we do is open and available to the public because openness is a disinfectant and it keeps these kind of malignant, unethical experiments from happening. And yet we have entered an age of perhaps greater secrecy than ever before. That's correct. I, in fact, I realized as I was doing my book, my intuition told me this was a small window that was closing, and I don't think that today I could get some of the documents that I was able to get for this book. Soldiers? Soldiers, thousands of, uh, thousands of soldiers were used uh, in bomb tests in Nevada. How? Well, they were, they were ordered into the blast area within minutes after detonation. Uh, they flew in, uh, uh, Air Force pilots flew into radioactive clouds. Uh, they detonated atomic bombs in the Pacific. Uh, the soldiers and sailors were then ordered in to retrieve um, uh, various uh, uh, instruments that were contaminated. And then there were not the people who were personally fed the radioisotopes, the kids at the Fernald School, or the women who were given these so-called vitamin cocktails that were actually radioactive, but there was the dispersing of radioactivity in the air over cities at schools. That's correct. Um, they, there were uh, there, one of the most famous is the Green Run. Uh, at the Hanford Reservation in which they... Uh, in Washington State. In Washington State, in which they released radioiodine. Um, and the prairie was very hot. Um, but that was one of the controversial findings in this committee report. They did not say or recommend that the government be forbidden from doing these kinds of things. They basically said, uh, y you need to have a committee, and at some point the documents should be made public. I, I, th I thought that was, was one of the worst recommendations that they came out with. I want to thank you, Eileen Wilson, very much for being with us. What was the biggest revelation for you in doing this research and looking at the plutonium files? Uh, uh, the biggest revelation for me was to see how cruel and inhuman these very educated doctors were toward their patients. And not telling them. And not telling them. And the medical establishment today, is it backing them up? Um, they were 
when I was doing my research on this book, they still uh, defended these experiments as being important. Well, Eileen Wilson, thanks for being with us. The book is called The Plutonium Files, America's Secret Medical Experiments in the Cold War. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. 